Bring Love Nick it. in or you're fired. Uh, Nick Offerman from <laughs> Parks and Rec. <clears throat> oh, I didn't recognize him. Of course. Oh, yeah. Good How you morning, doing, Nick. How you doing, man? Oh, Take a seat. Anthony, Jim Norton. Uh, we do the we do the immediately on the air thing. Yeah. So we're actually on the air. We just got... We just don't got, worry about it. I don't want you to, like, rush or anything. We just got beat up by Tim Conway. Yeah, That's Tim, what I heard. Tim Conway beat, just... I mean, uh, he just destroyed the entire room. He's not a nice guy. No. He's a mean little prick. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just gave me a rather baleful look in the men's room. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, he'll do that. I gave him a dollar. He was a mean little bastard he was. <laughs> wow. Kind of enjoyable, but it was kind of like, you know, expecting Tim Conway from the Cal Burnett show and fucking Amon Gert showed up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, was, that was rough. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm sure his book is really uh, good, so but we're not, not a- talking about his book anymore. Yeah. So we're talking about yeah. uh, there's not even a picture in his book. No, it's, it's about his, his life, and there's not one picture. Nick Offman has a book, <laughs> a very funny guy. Uh, Paddle your own canoe. It's one man's fundamentals for delicious living. And what exactly is? Because we've just got the book. What exactly is the, the push up? Is it your life story, or is it? Um, well, I, I've been touring a show as a humorist uh, that details my ten tips for prosperity. Uh, there are a number of things I want to say to the young people of our nation who I find to be insufferable often <laughs> times yes, and yes. just things like say please and thank you mm-hmm. put down your phone uh, carry a handkerchief <laughs> use intoxicants for crying out loud and, uh, and um some friends of mine began to say you know i like the your point of view in your show it sounds like it's coming from your book and i said oh you know there's a whole bunch of stuff i didn't have time for in my stage show so I pitched around a book, and so it's a uh, you know it's entertaining, it's funny, it's a, a bunch of stories from my life about what a jackass I am, and how I've managed to do okay despite that. Uh, so uh, you know there there's some allusions to Parks and Rec and my character. Mm-hmm. One one there's a chapter on eating red meat or how to grow. Uh, manly whiskers, things like that. <laughs> okay. Are you a, you a Second I, City guy? No, I come from straight theater. Uh, I. I I knew there's Amy. no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> quote, un, quote unquote. Yeah, okay. <laughs> quote unquote. Right. Forgive me. Legit theater. All right. That's <laughs> different, sir. Straight okay. theater with two guys somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were seven of us. Uh, but I knew I knew them. Uh, like I knew Amy Poehler in the early '90s in Chicago. But I was at like Steppenwolf, and I had my own theater company called the Defiant Theater. And we were doing, you know, Sam Shepard plays and Shakespeare. We'd do a Shakespeare play, but it, we'd do Hamlet, but Claudius would be like a cocaine king. And it would be oh, full nice. of, like, Ice-T and NWA songs. <laughs> um, so I, I come from theater, and then only in my 30s did I start working at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Because I realized nobody... If you come from, from quote-unquote, straight theater, people think you should be in drama. <laughs> And they did, don't think you're funny because you didn't go to comedy school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, I better go over to the comedy school and start smoking on the playground with those kids. Right on. <laughs> Sam Shepard was his. Pl- I just I just, by the way, fucking went to open up a pen and click the wrong way. And I clicked the pointy ah, end. I feel like I've been shit. shot. Hate that. Uh, the uh, Sam Shepard. Did he do a play uh, with where he plays with the, the woman's name is May? Um Oh fuck! Something about May. Uh, there yeah. was a May. There was a woman I'm, named May. I'm only thinking because I something oh, about yeah. May. Yeah, he masturbated onto his face. Oh, oh yes, oh, oh, onto every no. month, but that oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I, I, it was the worst thing I ever did. Was a scene in acting class from. I think it was a Sam Shepard play. Yeah. Oh, it was an. Why intru- did they pick that one? I don't know. I, I was just me. I was terrible. What, what are the names of some of his plays? Oh, Buried Child, Fool for Love. I uh, was Fool for Love. Michelle Pfeiffer did the movie, right? That sounds right. Okay, yeah. Oh, I did a scene out of Fool for Love. It was brutal. The only thing I know about Sam Shepard is he was in uh, The Right Stuff. He certainly was. He's a great actor. He was a great actor in that. Yeah. That was great. He was the Chuck Yeager character. He was. Yeah, he's he's yeah. Uh, he's in a great movie coming out. Uh, a buddy of mine wrote August Osage County. He plays a, a great role in that. It was a Pulitzer Prize winning play a few years ago here in town. He's what you call stoic. Yes. Yeah. He what is. does that mean? <laughs> uh, with with a granite visage? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got some words to look up when I get home. 
Mm. You see, oh, old, sa- old saddle face. Also. Old saddle face, which is something something I aspire to. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be around that long. I gotta, I gotta ask you about Parks and Rec. It's on hiatus. What's what's that about? Well, it's it's a that's a bit of an embellishment by the uh, the the muckrakers over at the Huffington Post. Oh, okay. oh boy, and NBC, you know, is trying to. F- figure out who to put in the game and and strategize how to get ahead here one of these days and so they put us on the bench for like two weeks oh, okay it's really not it's something that they do all the time where they're like you know what let's try and up this show's numbers by putting the voice in front of it right kind of right thing. Mm-hmm. and so we we just sat down for a minute but all right that's way different not going anywhere it is no. yeah we're no. I, I think we're uh, we're gonna get to finish the season is that show completely scripted, <laughs> or is it? Because uh, Amy's a brilliant improver. I've seen her work, and she's um, one of the greatest I've ever seen. It. She's like a crazy comedy machine. You put a quarter in her, and she'll she'll crank out a, a seven part series. Right. Like harassment. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> put a quarter in her. It's terrible. It's, I kind of liked it. Right. A fifty cent piece. Excuse oh, me. Right. Right. <laughs> um, it is. It is entirely scripted. Our writers, uh, a room of writers led by Mike Schur, who comes from SNL and then The Office, um, they're brilliant. So we we never need to make up a thing, but because we have people like Amy, we can shoot the incredible script and then say, okay, now what do you got? And then we screw around and find some other gold. And how much of that stuff makes uh, the show? Probably, I'd say, three or four moments a show, you know. Uh, right. You shoot a scene where it comes around to me and I have a punchline like, um, please don't touch my axe. And then uh, on take five through seven, I'll say, please don't touch my firewood implement or whatever the, the BS is. And once in a while, it's funny. <laughs> uh, with the others, <laughs> quite frequently, it's funny. Um, and, the, and sometimes they keep it in the show. Nice. What, and what is your, one, your play about or your, or your stage show? It's uh, it's something I've always, often aspired to do uh, is play the guitar and, and entertain people where they let me finish. And, um, <laughs> I, I never even remotely came close to it, but then I realized if I can get them laughing, they don't care <laughs> how terrible my guitar playing is. So uh, there, it's a bunch of funny songs uh, with, with all these anecdotes of... You know, here's here's a story about me being a complete idiot when I was a teenager. Um, it interspersed, sort of dovetailed in with these lessons of, you know, say please and thank you. Don't look in the mirror. That's a big one. Can don't you? look in the mirror. Avoid the mirror. Yeah, that's that's the key to a, a great self-image. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because you'll... you'll kind of be well, down on all yourself. the channels all, all the commercials keep telling me i should look like kira knightley and <laughs> and i feel good about that inside and i mince about the sidewalk feeling beautiful and it it works well unless i look in the mirror <laughs> right. and, and, and see oh jesus <laughs> makes sense this is not no, you're not looking this very is not nice. cutting it no. <laughs> well, well, you, you're one of the few guys that really makes a mustache work in this day and age i mean it really I it, it, it works you. for you i can't how uh, long have you had the mustache well, uh, I'm a character actor, so it's one of the tools in my box. I, I love to pull it out when I'm playing a cop or a thug or whatnot. Mm. Uh, I guess I've had a pretty full, you know, set of facial bracken since I was about 20 or 19. But um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't uh, go for one look. So I'm, I'm looking forward when my show is over to to shave it off, put it away for a while. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Do you get sick of it? Uh, I I don't mind it. I, Usually, I've never been on a series like this before, so usually I look really different every three months, and that's fun. It's like a Lon Chaney lifestyle. Um, who are you? You know, I, I like to be unrecognizable. Uh, I found a way to do that in 20 years of stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesus. But now, now it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm ready to, to have the disguise of my clean-shaven face. What do you mean, Lon Chaney? Did he switch up the way his look all the time? Yeah, well, he he was the guy who played sort of every different monster, mm, yeah. and, and he, he he was a an early uh, film makeup genius. He used to when he when he had to make his eyes look blind, he would cut out that filament from a hard boiled egg between the egg and the shell. Oh shit! And lay a piece of Holy that in over his eye. 
which I've That's tried. Committing. Wow. It's quite difficult. I would gather. <laughs> you actually tried that. I did because I was broke. And <laughs> I said, well, oh, Lon Chaney did this. And I've, I talked to a guy whose dad did makeup with Lon Chaney years later. And he was like, oh, well, there's a whole bunch of other shit you got to do to it. But you, <laughs> you can't you just, just stick lay that in your eye. Yeah. You yeah. still get vinegar and, you know. Got to fog it up, I guess, or yeah. something. But, Ungoop it. But doesn't it, yeah, doesn't it come apart? Or how do you how do you take it out? Like a lens is solid. Contact lens is solid. It's the um, taking it out. I, I couldn't answer because I never quite got it in. But it's <laughs> it's like a fabric. It's it's like that filamenty skin that pulls out from the inside of the shell. And he thought to put that on his eyes to look blind. It's pretty yeah, smart. Pretty, yeah. It's amazing now. It's just so easy to do. They just throw a contact lens in you and fucking you're done. Yeah. Which is what I ended up having to, to do. I was like, oh, this that was a day of pain. Uh, how much are those white contact lenses? Why'd you want to look blind? Uh, it was for a film, uh, an independent film that didn't have any budget. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of the blind. Yeah, guys. I, got the, <laughs> I got the blind stuff. So don't worry about it. I got it, guys. I'm on it. Got some eggs. But Chino did a good job of looking blind in a scent of a woman. Like, he, he, there was something about it. It didn't look like, it just looked like he was kind of not seeing anybody. And I'm like, what a talent that is to... Yeah, some people can't pull that off, and they're but it sounds blind people. stupid and simple. But mm. to be able to look at somebody but not see them and look yeah. like you're not seeing them is pretty fucking impressive. Especially when you have to act with somebody, yeah. that would be a little. That's the thing hard is, uh, I if you, you in in the case of Al Pacino, you can be good at acting. <laughs> uh, I unfortunately had to try and stick, <laughs> stick an egg in my face <laughs> <laughs> to pull it off. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah. Is it hard to go from uh, the, cause this format of Parks and Rec? Is you know again, it's a, it's a different feel. It's kind of it feels like a documentary style comedy, and then to kind of go back to straight comedy after that, or what's more traditional, probably isn't as fun. Uh, it's just it's different. I mean, I I come from the stage, and my wife and I did a play this year, which we're actually bringing to New York next year, called Annapurna, which is uh, it, it's really a lot of fun. It's a it's a comedy, but then it gets really dramatic. It's a really great piece of writing, and that's that's our first love. And I guess in the theater, you do what's ever in the season. So maybe you're doing like uh, the death of a salesman, and then you turn around and do some wacky. You can go do the Book of Mormon or something. And so it's kind of fun to switch up disciplines. We do get spoiled on my show because of the documentary style and everything's handheld. We don't have a lot of marks like you do in a film. Mm. And you can basically be sloppier and lazier. <laughs> and so then you go back and work on a film and they're like, uh, no, Nick, we need you to please do the same thing every time. And you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Mm. They let me do whatever I want over at our hilarious chuckle fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it's gotta be nice just to fucking kind it's gotta of gotta be freeing. Yeah, yeah, being on the mark sucks. It is many scenes. Like if we were shooting this right now, they'd be shooting through the windows, so there'd be no cameras in here. Mm. And so you you become much more relaxed and natural and I never do this unless I'm yeah, relaxed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst though is when you think you're doing it right and they're like, alright, we gotta stop because you, you're in the wrong place. Oh, like, oh no. Fuck. What do you think? Like, oh man, I'm brilliant here. This is great. One yeah. of my best performances. This is the one. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I have no sense. I have no sense of what works or doesn't work. Uh, do you get scared when you act at all? I, I get nervous. I don't. Uh, I, 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 my first gig was as an altar boy at the Catholic Church in my hometown. Um, which I believe is on page 29. Uh, oh. And um, that was when I learned, uh, I started, you have uh, uh, these glass containers called cruets. One has water and one has wine. And the priest mixes them uh, as part of the ceremony. And he somehow magically turns it into the blood of Jesus and then he <laughs> drinks it. Um, and invariably, I, I served under several priests and they all <laughs> really humorously it's like a Mel Brooks scene. The, take the wine and then go glug, 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 glug. There you go. And then take the water and go bloop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, that's an equal mixture. <laughs> that's all you need. And I started, uh, I started reviewing the wine with facial expressions for the for the crowd. You know, so I'd be standing there and I'd take a whiff of the wine and kind of shake my head and make a frowny face. Or sometimes I'd I'd say, huh, pleasing, pleasing bouquet tinged with just a hint of regret <laughs> and uh my dad took me aside and was like this is not the place to entertain the audience this is the congregation but i said oh okay I'll, then I, I guess i need to find a place where people enjoy my mm. mug, my mugging more than church yeah yeah 
No yeah. issues at church? Yeah, I know. As soon as you hear altar yeah, boy, you, you hear that, ask. Make, you automatically think it's... No, it's true. I uh, No, I, I escaped unscathed. We had we had a, a, good, a b- good bunch of guys, but it was always really scary to to hear all the stories. Uh, Oof. You know, like, I never hear any stories from anybody in real life, so I'm assuming a lot of people are lying. That's what I assume. It's like, anything happened to you? No. No, no, we had a great <laughs> And meanwhile, like, yeah. as he's saying that in his head is just this horror movie is playing, yeah. House of Horrors. Yeah, it's like House of Horrors is, back to the House of is playing thing. in his mind. I'm perfectly well adjusted. I love my Cub Scouts. Are you, <laughs> yeah. are you willing to take a lie? <laughs> Detector yeah. test. Well, we gotta, um... Yeah, nothing happened. The fact that I wake up screaming every night has nothing yeah. to do with that. <laughs> right. A lot of people get night terrors. A lot of people finger their dogs. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> It could, it could happen. <laughs> you a married man, are you? I am. I ha- I'm happily married. I've been with my wife for 14 years. Me- the great Megan Mullally. From Did you Lola say wife Grace. of 14 years? Uh, yes, we've been oh. together for 14. We just oh. had our 10th anniversary. Oh, <laughs> See, I was oh dating a- for four. Yeah, yeah, I was making an underage girl joke. Oh, my, wife, my wife of 14, wife 14 years, years yeah. just didn't really go she's, over. She's Sorry. terrific. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you put a quarter in her. <laughs> that quarter is very <laughs> handy with women. <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh, in, the- in theater with you. Oh, great. I, I assume, yeah, yeah. yeah she, she, uh, yes, she's yes. done Broadway shows. She, mm-hmm. she was in uh, Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, which is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Who was she in that? Uh, the Madeline Kahn mm-hmm. part, yeah. Elizabeth. <laughs> The oh, Madeline, not a, I, I the even, Madeline Kahn part. I thought he meant in the movie. Yeah. No, no, the musical. Oh, they did a Broadway okay. musical, yeah. I was going to go, like, yeah. oh, I was gonna say, like, wow, you were older. You were married mm-hmm. to Madeline Kahn? What <laughs> happened? Yeah, it didn't work out. No. And she does a little no. Parks and Rec, a little bit. She does, yeah. She yeah. works on my show. She does. As your ex? She, she does uh, all kinds of stuff. She has an amazing new band called Nancy and Beth. We were, we were just analyzing it last night because it's, um, they, they do old-fashioned like kick-ass blues and rock songs that are a little more obscure, but they add the production value of like a Beyonce show. So she and her friend Stephanie Hunt, they do all this super sexy, intense choreography. Well, it's like an old Tina Turner kind of show. And it's just something nobody does anymore. Right. Like we've all become so lazy that we sit on a stool <laughs> just play and play a mandolin and like right. let me send you about coffee. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate me. But yeah, they're they're called Nancy and Beth. They're uh super a lot of fun. And I, I guest for them a lot. I, I perform a couple different rap songs for them. We, really? We do hits from the bong and uh Smell Yo Dick by Risque. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> So yeah, there's some mirth. That one. Is that a real song? There's some mirth in the show. Oh, that's a real song. It is. Oh, Smell yeah. Yo Dick. It's incredible. Yeah, it. it's a, oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard it before, yeah. sure. Yeah, from, Sam's played it. What do you, you think of the passing of Lou Reed? Everyone's talking about Lou Reed today. Well, I, I doffed my cap. I mean, I, uh, I'm i also a really big fan of a very close friend of his, Laurie Anderson. And, and You're a big fan. Oh, God, yeah. Hold on. Okay. She was a weirdo. Hold on, though. She's a weirdo, We yeah. started our show because they married in 2008. I did not know that. And then we played Oh, Superman, because that's the only thing we know. Mm-hmm. W- why are you a big fan? We don't get it. She's a performance artist, obviously. She is, yeah. But it, explain Laurie Anderson to us. Well, she, to me, I mean, she's off the charts smart and so i i feel daunted trying to like like explain stephen hawking to me um, yeah yeah but she uh but what makes to, her so brilliant well uh, you put a quarter in her <laughs> she uh she is a storyteller um who takes her stories and uh performs them in a, in a really innovative way she also plays the violin so i i used to see her live in the 80s and 90s and she she just puts on really trippy, cool shows using sound and, and visual. Um, and so they're like these little theater pieces, just r- rife with great ideas. So she's a progressive thinker. You know, she she does a, an amazing job of making fun of society. I mean, in Oh, Superman, there's that bit about, uh, hello, this is your mom. And she, she takes uh, sort of hilarious human dogma and points it back up to us to make us laugh at ourselves but her shows were the greatest i mean if you like pink floyd the wall or any kind of like intense visual kick-ass rock show it was sort of like that at a library (laughs) i'm a a huge fan of hers and and that made i I love lou reed as well and then when they hooked up i was like fantastic wow 
There you go. Please run our country. We got, we got, we got our answer finally. Yeah, That's how we right. started the show. I don't know. I'm still too shallow to uh, well, appreciate it. Yeah, it's not for everyone, I'm sure. Uh, you, know, you know what sounds but, good to me? Uh, Swedish supergroup ABBA. <laughs> 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 they also have their place in the Pantheon. Exactly. Well, her, she, she's also really funny. Um, and I, maybe, I don't know. Didn't I didn't come across in that Superman video. Well, this, the Superman thing is weird because um, when 9-11 uh, when happened, that, that song resurfaced because it had all of these prescient lines of, here come the planes, the oh, okay. American planes. Oh, so you got some conspiracy theorists going, look at this. I think... But I, I think that the Bush administration may have been Laurie Anderson fans as well. Oh, so they around. listened to it and then perpetrated uh, that. Or at least the Velvet Underground. So Jesse Ventura yeah. could then mm. explain it to everybody. All right. Apparently, uh, <laughs> W loved to crank up Sweet Jane when he was going yeah. on a night mission. When he was partying? Over Tuscaloosa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got a very unique voice, I was man. just... I'm, I'm hearing Christian Bale from American Psycho. Oh, really? <laughs> and then they go really obscure Dave Rabbit, the, Dude, the Vietnam job. Look what I wrote down. Whoa. What? Oh. Did you do the, I wrote down Dave Rabbit. Dave, Dave Rabbit? Because I was going to point out that Nick sounded like him, and I didn't want to forget. Dave Rabbit. Exactly. Like, we, there's uh, some Vietnam tapes of this guy that used to just, you know, be a DJ over there during the shit. And, uh, I don't know, they became quite popular on our show. You sound exactly like him. And a little Christian Bale, no? From American Psycho? Or, or is that a stretch? No, I, I wasn't really picking that up. I've actually heard that a lot, which is... American oh, Psycho? Okay. It is. It's All right, a, thank it's you. It's a very funny... And I don't... <laughs> it's a, such a funny thing to be like, you know, yeah, really, you sound exactly like American psycho. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, why? That's like not the, <laughs> you're right. You sound like psychopath. a rapist. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's I hear also, um, and I'm not super familiar with, I guess, their, their normal speaking voices, but drivers often say, when they don't see me, they say, if I, if I, didn't know it was you, I would swear I had Charlie Sheen in the back of my car. Oh, yeah, there is a Charlie and also, Sheen thing. And also, sometimes Nicolas Cage. Yes, I hear a little Which Nicolas Cage. Cage. We had him. Well, Jimmy ones. would know. Jimmy There's sat down on a flight with Nicolas Cage and had a little conversation with yeah. him. Let's hear about that. Well, could you could you, uh, I, I, could you once in a six hour period go? Huh? <laughs> That's all I need from you. <laughs> he wasn't Jimmy, he wasn't very talkative with Jimmy, and what, Jimmy wanted to be wait, talkative what, with him, you, and it was embarrassing. Oh, you want to hear Dave Rabbit, who we really think you sound like? Oh, sure, please. All right, E-Rock. Sorry about that yelling and screaming, but Pete and I are on a trip, right. and we thought we'd have to get in on that song. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he's, got a, he's got a glottal fry going the on. The biggie. Yeah. Three dog night. <laughs> it's called Mama Told Me Not to Come. <laughs> now, you can take this two ways. As a title... Or your girlfriend's name is Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And he passed recently. I'm yeah, he just died. Yeah. Those were all like, uh, like, like just he, amazing. When he hijacked the signal and fucking broadcast, right? Oh, yeah, it was all illegal broadcast. And there's not much. Uh, if anyone else has audio of that guy, I would love to hear it. We only got, a, I don't know, one show or something of the guy. There's yeah. definitely something that he had a little more of more. that gritty, grainy, gravelly yeah, thing. He had that good Vietnam shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it does. It sounds like he's talking while he's still holding in a hit. That's uh, that's some good fucking. Well, that's what those guys shit. would do, though. They would do yeah. the hit and then just start talking uh, without. Well, uh, <laughs> just exhale as they went. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was back when, uh, if if during this radio interview, we would have tons of Marlboro Reds and joints in this room. Oh, yeah. And not think twice about it. Not even... Now we only have three. I, <laughs> I, 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 I love watching old movies like that, too. I was watching something, uh, an episode of Columbo or something, and, <laughs> and I, I love that dumb show. And uh, they had a scene inside an airplane, and there's just people smoking and oh. people just walking through the gates into the plane with not a, a, an ounce of security. Oh, that's crazy. You kind of remember that shit, though. I love the notion... Uh, the first major commercial flight I took, I, I went from my farm town in Illinois to the University of Illinois and ended up in this Kabuki theater play, which we were suddenly going to take to Japan. So that was my first big flight was nonstop oh, Chicago wow. to Tokyo. Okay. And we were, it was 1991. We were like 21 years old and we get on this huge jumbo jet and 
just behind row 17 was the smoking section. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In hindsight, it's yeah. so yeah. idiotic. You're <laughs> yeah. in a huge soup can, and they're like, everybody <laughs> below <laughs> right. yeah, one yeah. third it's, can smoke. Unless they've invented the force field, yeah. you are not uh, going to be in If you're in 16, prison. please don't smoke. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> like the dumb restaurants where they're not smoking areas. What the hell? Yeah. Did yeah. it stink the whole so flight? Stink. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, of course. I never flew on a smoking flight. My, I, Come on, Jimmy. Never in my life. I, I took one trip to Seattle in like 1990. When did the smoking stop, though? I don't know. That, it was a continental it was in, flight. International that flights. Was international. It stopped uh, later. Japan yeah. Airlines was one of the last. If you, took, if you took Japan Airlines, that was one of the last ones to stop it. Oh, yeah. They love smoking. Oh, Japanese maybe. people, you sit at a blackjack table in Atlantic City. You know, with Japanese people, you can't even see the cards. It's they just love uh, you're, in, you're encased in, in smoke. You know, Jimmy might be right. I just assume I was on a flight where they were smoking. Never remember. No, I don't think. So. All right, sporting I, events, oh, of course. Holy that, shit! And yeah. concerts, my god. I remember I was like twelve years old. I'm on a plane yeah. going to L.A. and and just smoke everywhere. It's how they allowed people to just have little flaming objects in the plane. Yeah. It just seems so odd now that for safety reasons... In a vehicle that's carrying a huge amount of oxygen. The oxygen and fuel. And yeah. yeah, yeah. And there you go. Everyone, have a lighter. Light up. And they're worried about our dumb cell phones? Our cell phones. Are, yeah. <laughs> right. What are you <laughs> like me? That? Please remove your shoes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, you used to smoke. Turn your cell phones off. What? <laughs> you know what we used to do up here? <laughs> this we used was, to have fire in our seats. crazy. <laughs> right. We were pinching it's stewardesses' all, asses, and it's all nonsense. Well, not at 12. <laughs> well I, I, I say uh, good luck with the book, Nick. Have we sold it properly? I don't even know. It's called Paddle Your Own Canoe, and yeah. it's, uh, it's Nick Offerman, and it's got some true stories in there and some life advice. Um, and some, some humorous illustrations by a very funny guy named Mike Mitchell, uh, including some illustrations of me performing breakdance moves. Oh. Um, also, some acceptable and unacceptable versions of facial hair. I, I'm right on that page. Look at that. Including when I first oh. met Harry Connick Jr. when he was working on Will and Grace, uh, I had a goatee. Very mm. funny, hilarious, talented guy. And I met him, you know, hi, hey, this, this is Nick. Hey, how you doing? And he pulled me in with the handshake and said, where I come from, we call that a prison pussy. <laughs> 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 and I said... I think you and I are going to get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, he, he is so funny. Oh, the douchebag. I think you got this uh, down. <laughs> I'm looking at the illustration. The douchebag. <laughs> the yeah. the douchebag. Uh, the, the nut smudge. Yeah. The joke. I think you, you figured out the facial hair. <laughs> are you doing your signings? I am, yeah. I've been doing, I, I had a big signing at Union Square at the Barnes & Noble and it's weird. It's a whole new medium. Um, mm. The book. <laughs> the book. Turns out, yeah. This stuff, they're putting it out on paper now. It's amazing. And it's it's rather permanent. Like, uh, mm. it's funny because you, you know, you you tell jokes, you tell stories, and there's something ephemeral to it. Like, you, nowadays it exists forever on the internet, but it's still, it's, uh, you listen to it and it's gone. Mm. But when it's written on paper in the library, people take it seriously in a different way. <laughs> or, or maybe you get a different breed of nerd in the line and and i say nerd lovingly counting myself amongst their number but they're they're like i've i've memorized your book and there's a few things i wanted to talk to you about <laughs> oh boy uh, behind the building and you're like well hang on i'll be right there That's yeah the creepy ones right before the the bullet enters your side. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, way to end it on a fun note. <laughs> no problem. Fucking, Nick Sine is going to be like the fucking end of uh, talk radio. <laughs> Enjoy my book. You're a dead fucker. <laughs> uh, do you have any signings coming up? So I was going to plug them, but we don't have them in front of us. That's why I was. And it's oh, Nick man. Offerman on Twitter. Uh, Nick underscore Offerman. I do have, uh, I have events coming up in Toronto and Vancouver, November 2nd and 3rd. And uh, I have my touring American ham show. Uh, the only hard ticket show is at the Dallas House of Blues, November I don't know, 16th or so. The night before Meat Fight. Oh, meat Fight? That's right. I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> my brother and I are judging an event in Dallas called Meat Fight, which raises money for multiple sclerosis. Mm, it's hard research. to say. Uh, yeah. We just say MS. Yeah. MS. Makes it easier. And uh, where can people go to get your <laughs> signings? Your Wait, we got to ask about Meat Fight. Oh, yeah, what happens sure. at that event? Four barbecue pit masters come together uh, and uh, gird see. their loins, literally. Uh, they gird and smoke their loins and feed them to me. 
And uh, I reward one of them with a nod of approval? See, I, I, I was assuming something violent. Meat fight. See, I was assuming something really fun between two gentlemen. We all <laughs> came to different conclusions. About this. <laughs> it could, I, don't, I haven't gotten a lot of details, so it could mm. be a, a penis slapping sure, sure. facial situation. <laughs> all right. That's fun, too. Whatever it is, we'll be raising a good amount of mm. money for MS research. Absolutely. Yes. It's not gay if it's for charity. Whatever it is. <laughs> Let's get um, the shirts made. You can, yeah. you can find out about anything you want uh, with my book or my, my tour at my website, OffermanWoodshop.com. I, I built that canoe that's on the cover. Is that oh, true? Yeah. That's that's real, right? Yeah. The wood thing? Uh, yeah, I make furniture and boats and stuff. Oh, you do? Manly guy. How much you charge to do a... Uh, I'm trying to get a, a fucking a nice... A, a small little TV stand made, but uh, oh, yeah? it's extremely expensive to get done. It is. Why do you have it made? Because they don't have the size I need. I need a very narrow one because of the way my living room is. Oh, um, custom uh, made. Custom made. I need it custom. Come on, um, Nick. You could do it for him. There, there's a guy in, in town, actually, my friend Jimmy DeResta. Who, who, you probably know John DeResta. I know John. I was just talking about him. He's a comedian. He lives in L.A. now. Yeah. Really funny guy. He, well, he, uh, his brother, Jimmy, is on the Lower East Side, and he's an incredible fabricator of things. Ooh. And he makes furniture. He, he can make you anything out of any material. He's Do you have crazy. dado blades? We have dado blades, yeah. Yeah, you cut yourself a dovetail joint. Yeah, that's right. That's nice. <laughs> like that. That's good. It's, it's, a man, it's a manly guy right there. I like the way you talk. I like that. Do you sell the canoes? Mm -hmm. We've sold one canoe on commission. I've made two, one for myself and one for JimmyDeresta.com. And uh, they're expensive. Like, you can't make canoes for a profit. Um they take months to make. There's wow. a lot of pieces, and there's no straight lines. Look at other people yeah. that do that stuff and just say, look, I, I made this. Well, we do. No, we, we Get have a sweatshop. I've got a shop full of woodworkers, but unfortunately, it's good-hearted, and we're trying to make these youngsters uh, a living. So These are amazing, too, these uh, canoes like this, because it, it literally looks like furniture it, floating. It, it's, it's beautiful. Does. The it's, sides are so nice and uh Shiny. At first, oh. it gets really hard. Like you don't want to take it out. You don't want to take it out. You're like, well, it's like putting a wonderful dresser in the water. Just I should have built a Corvette. Kicking a coffee table into <laughs> yeah. the water. Don't want to but, bang this yeah. up. So. Yeah, a lot of sanding. A lot of wet sanding with that. I I, I issue the wet sanding really as much as possible. Yeah, it's a that's it's a great finishing technique, but it's like a super high end. Yeah. refined museum quality yes and i try to have all the stuff i make be of a more rustic natural uh, like it'll fit into a modern home but it'll also fit oh, okay into paul bunyan so what do you lodge. just use a rasp i, I spit <laughs> finish on it. it with a rasp i i, I sand up to about 150 180 but oh yeah that's maybe, some fine grit 220 is, is as high as i like a little to go. high as high as you go yeah, yeah i hear you I'm going to call Jimmy DeResta and say, That's Nick Offerman <laughs> said you could hook me up with a nice little uh, unit. He said it uh, wouldn't run me more than 600 bucks. He, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll say, hey, I'm from Long Island. Hey, I'm sure he didn't give you a quote. Uh, he, he isn't much faster than I am. He's, he's incredible. He's somebody who's kind of a hero to me. He, you can be like, hey, can you make me these headphones out of glass <laughs> or, or steel or yarn? And be like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll give them to you next Got week, it. Wednesday. I'll, you know what? Because the quotes I've gotten, it's like a, I need a, it's a very specific thing. It's not too complicated. It's pretty simple what I want. Yeah. But it's just I need a certain size, and that's what's hard to find. you got to go custom. Sure. And mm. uh, the, the quotes are astronomical, and it's just not worth it. It's like, wow. It's a tough thing. I mean, uh, th there's a resurgence of artisanal handcrafting in our country, which I'm a big fan of, because in our communities, if we can all begin making our own stuff again, you know, you make, you make leather belts and boots. I'll, I'll grow a garden. You knit dresses. Oh, we'll, we'll wear, have to do that. I'll wear them in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, I'll spank you we'll, with my belt. We'll get together <laughs> and have a meat fight. <laughs> that sounds great. But it, it's a Jeffersonian thing. If a community can support itself, then we can tell China to go suck it at some point. That would be nice. Which yeah. would, would be nice. That's would all I'm great. saying. We're being held as uh, their little puppets these well, days. They, owe a lot, they own a lot of our country. Well, now. I know. That's the, the kind of awkward. Catch. It would be yeah. nice to have that not <laughs> That happening. is the catch. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of tough to tell them to go fuck themselves. Well, yeah. once, once we all start cobbling our own shoes, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that point. You know what? Opie has a good point. It literally is tough to tell them to go fuck themselves. 
Uh, you got what is Chinese for go fuck yourself? You got to learn Mandarin. First, yeah, you got to learn Mandarin. No, I thought that was kind of funny, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I'm just weighing the options. It's not a bad point, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard. To... All right, let's get Nick out of here. Nick uh, let's, Nick let's us get out of here. Yeah, oh yeah, my doing? God, we're yeah, we, missing Sam's show. Oh wow, yeah, oh. We, we went late for oh, Nick sorry. Offerman. That means it, it went well. Yes, yes, and we're relieved that Tim Conway's gone. Yes, I was much oh. more gentle. Yes, oh, and, oh, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Out of yes. the two, I would assume you would be the meanie, not, not Tim Conway. Yeah. <laughs> Tim's a rotten little man. <laughs> <laughs> and Parks and Rec, of course, coming back. That hiatus thing was just short-lived, a couple weeks. That's yeah, it's BS. That's very, <laughs> that's very good news. Yeah. And do we have anybody to... Um, oh, Nick, had, um, I forgot to mention uh, that I'll be at the Beacon this Friday with Dice. <laughs> uh, so tickets nice are... Uh, go to Ticketmaster if you want to see uh, me and Dice, and don't if you don't. And who do we have tomorrow, anybody? Mm. We'll Who's coming in tomorrow? tomorrow? You know? We don't know until we get here. I know. I never know. We'll figure it out tomorrow. All right. Nick Offerman, like uh, pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Come back yes, and see sir. us, all right? Yeah, great to meet you. All right. Thank you, sir. The OPA Show. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton. <laughs>